Hi guys, this video is going to teach you 50 tips, tricks, and secrets to go from beginner to pro in Pal World, from stuff that you missed in the spawn area of the game, all the way through to a single farm that is going to get you rare pals, tens of thousands of gold, and thousands and thousands of XP. You're going to be insta-leveling pals, it's crazy. So you've got all that to come and more. Drop a like if you're excited, we'll jump straight into it. First off, did you know that when you first spawn in, it's going to be tempting to just run straight forward outside the ruins, but if you turn around, there are actually a few chests and some lore that you can collect. To get these, follow my path here. You'll see this is where the first chest spawn is located. If the chest is purple, you'll gain around 500 gold coins, which are going to be used for trading. We'll talk more about trading later, including how to get some of the best pals in the game, but don't worry too much about that. And if you keep following me here, you can see the other stuff that you can grab as well. Now, once you've gotten started with the game, you should probably try and capture every single pal that you see until you've captured 10 of each type. I wouldn't do this the moment you start playing, but once you've started getting comfortable, it's a good rule to have in the back of your mind. By doing this, you still get drops from the pals as if you killed them, but you get a boatload of XP as well, and that means you're basically double dipping with no consequence, and you can stack XP that much faster. We'll talk more in a moment about avoiding being over encumbered and stuff like that, but first, just a heads up that you can actually change your server settings at any point in your game via the menu. Select your world, then select change world settings at the bottom, and then custom settings. There's a whole bunch of ways that you can adjust things in there, but a few things I think are interesting. Uh, number one, if you're hunting for nighttime only pals, you can turn the nighttime speed down to 0.1 to have longer nights. And with longer nights, Flying pals like the Nightwing can be ridden to discover illuminated collectibles as well. Right below that is the XP rate, which you can turn up to 20 if you want to level super fast and unlock a bunch of technology early. And if you're not finding enough pals in your game, you feel like things are a little bit too barren and bare, you can triple the pal appearance rate, but this does come at a cost of performance. And if you're running on a lower end machine, there's a chance that this might make your game lag because there are so many pals running around. Another setting to consider changing is structure deterioration rate. You can turn that down to zero and you may like the challenge on this next one, but if you change the death penalty setting to no drops, you'll no longer be penalized for dying. And if you happen to be exploring the world and need to go back to base, you can simply just die if you're not near a teleport. So it'll sort of save you some time and depending on the way that you want to engage with the game could make things just that much more straightforward. Now, I mentioned earlier that we would talk about getting encumbered. If you focus early on on capturing catavers, their passive ability increases your weight capacity by 50 per cativer in your party, up to 250. And this is especially useful early when you're exploring for materials and you're carrying heavy materials and stuff like that. And speaking of that early game, I'd say that a good place for your first base is just down here from the spawn. It's flat, it's open, it's surrounded by useful pals for the early early game and we'll talk more about which ones to capture soon but I think that this is a good first base spot. Now as you're leveling I'd also say be very mindful of what you're putting your points into. I'd say focusing your stamina and your weight are quite good choices although you don't need the weight so much towards the early game if you're stacking catavers but just be mindful that these points are precious and you want to make sure that you spend them wisely. Now going back to talking about your base your pal box has a pretty large radius meaning anything within it will will count as your base. This means any material that's in any container inside that radius will be usable anywhere inside your base. I'd say focus on upgrades to your pal box early as it'll give increased max pals working at base by one per upgrade, up to 15 pals. And a little trick here is that you can increase your max pal count by summoning a pal from your party, such as the Eichthyr deer, who will chop wood so long as you're in your base. It doesn't count towards your max pals number though. So so you again can kind of double dip and be a bit more efficient this way. Now, sometimes you're going to accidentally attack a high level enemy. It's going to happen or you're just going to be tempted to do it. It's going to happen at some point, right? Maybe, for example, this Mamarest. If it happens, just run away as far as you can until you're no longer hearing the combat music. And that will mean that the power
PAL has returned to its place and it will be chilling out again and no longer chasing you. Another tip for dealing with unwanted combat encounters is the common shield, which you unlock at level four and you should craft it as soon as you possibly can. It regens when you're not taking damage and it does it much faster than your health bar. So really worth doing. At the next level, level five, you can craft the normal parachute. On the surface, this thing is terrible. You can barely move around anywhere with it since it's so slow and it uses stamina very quickly. However, the flight speed is momentum based. So if you get your speed up from sliding down a slope, for example, you can jump and launch yourself forward with the parachute. Now then, remember those chests that we originally found in the spawn area? There are more of those to be found around the world, but you won't have to look too far as they reset after a full in-game day. So you don't have to go to the ends of the world to try and find those chests. If you're lucky, the chests have a chance to upgrade in rarity after they reset as well. So don't assume they're always going to be the same when you check them. But this next tip is just sort of a heads up. If you build something where a resource normally spawns, such as a tree, for example, there's a chance that the tree you built over will not spawn until it's unobstructed. So until your structure is no longer there. So if you want those things to come back, you're going to need to make sure that you do not obstruct them. Now, I mentioned trading earlier. There's a reason why you should capture every pal. It's not just because of the benefits that we mentioned earlier with XP. It's also for trading. They're going to make you a bunch of gold over here at this encampment. So head over over to it and when you get there go to this pal trader and sell your extra pals especially the ones with the negative passives you can check those via this little thing just here there's no reason to have those negative passive pals take up all that space when you can just make a bunch of gold early on and you can always recapture pals later too but don't worry this isn't the only way to make gold in the video we've got plenty more of that coming up nice and soon just to change the topic though for a moment did you know that you can reset a food's spoil timer you just have to drop the food and pick it back up again and the timer will reset and it will never spoil. So who needs a fridge? A bonus tip is that that doesn't work in real life. So don't get any ideas. Now, if you're struggling to move large amounts of resources in your base, and we've talked about over encumberment a little bit, you can still use the grappling gun to move around. This is especially useful while moving your base to another location, as you can take as many materials as you can hold, grapple to your pal box, teleport, and then grapple to your new chest location. And within this tip, some extra sort of info, a little trick here is that you can unequip the grapple and put it back on to reset the five second cooldown timer if you want to be extra techie about things. And to unlock it, you need ancient technology points and you get these from taking down tower bosses and alpha pals for the first time. It's important to note though that you only get these from alpha pals in the overworld, not dungeons, and they're marked by circle icons on the map. Now I've mentioned dungeons. Let's talk about those now. There are a few dungeons near the spawn area. I'll show two of them to you here. If you return to the ruins where you spawn, you can go past the chest locations and you can jump off this broken staircase. Follow my path down to the beach and this is where you'll find your first dungeon. The second one is located next to the syndicate tower. So again, just follow my path in the gameplay here and it'll be just here that you find the dungeon. Inside dungeons, you'll notice that if you backtrack, new enemies are going to spawn in rooms that you've already cleared. This also applies to the dungeon boss, which can be found by making your way through to the room with the huge fossil. This room has three doors you can go through, and this door here will bring you towards the Alpha Pal dungeon boss. If you keep right, you'll find another door with some wood planks outside. You can go through that and follow the path like I'm doing in the gameplay here into the boss arena. Now, what happens if you get in there and you look up in front of you and, oh, boohoo, it's not the boss that you want to capture, right? It's all good. We can deal with this. You're simply going to return to the fossil room that I pointed out before. Make sure there's a new enemy spawned in in that room and then return to the boss arena. A new pal type will then take the old boss's place, but there's a chance that it just respawns the same one. So it may be that you need to repeat this trick a couple of times. And don't forget also, while you're doing those dungeons, you can dodge. It's going to be B on Xbox and I think it's control on PC by default. Now, let's talk 
pals. I mentioned earlier that you don't need to venture too far out of your base to find useful pals. And here's an especially useful quick list of essential pals for you to capture early on. Catavers are kind of jacks of all trades. They'll help you build your base quicker, mine stone. And like I said before, they also help with extra carry capacity. So even once you replace them with better pals, they're still going to have some purpose in the world. You'll find them over by the starting area. Daydreams are great for early combat as you can passively keep them at your side so long as they're in your party. The only caveat with these is that you need to craft their necklace first, which you unlock at level eight. You can do it by going to the pal gear workbench. And once you've done that, you'll then be able to have them travel by your side. To find these also, it is going to need to be nighttime. They're found all over the starting area, but it must be night. And then once you find one, you can just capture it the normal way by beating it up and then throwing it into a pal sphere. Now, a little bonus tip here is that if you love using daydreams, capturing a who crates at nighttime around the spawn area might be a good idea as well. While in your party, they passively increase dark damage, which which buffs your daydreams, making them stronger. Now, I mentioned the Cataver is a jack of all trades, right? Sometimes you actually don't want that. Finding pals with just one work efficiency is better for your base of operations because those pals will stick to their specialized task. You can get a few of these early on, and one of the best ones is the Ike Thier Deer. It has lumbering level two, it can be mounted, and it spawns down the hill and north of the spawn area as well. Lamb balls are all over the spawn area and are great wool generators. Throw them into a ranch and you can just let them get to work and they'll even help with building parts of your base so they're nice to have when you start. Combats are especially useful for finding pals you want to capture because their active ability detects nearby pals and shows their icons on the compass. They also have level two gathering, mining, and transporting, which could be super useful early on. And they also only spawn at nighttime to the north and west of the starting area. Fox sparks are so good. You can wield them as a flamethrower with their level six harness, and they only have a level in kindling. Once you get one, they'll cook all your food and smelt down your ores into ingots, and they can be found west of the spawn area. So like I said before, single use pals like this can be really, really effective. Ruby pals have the same utility as the Fox Sparks, but are found on other islands. They, however, can be found as an alpha pal in dungeons around the starting area. T-fans can be found to the west and north of the starting area and will do watering tasks only. So that will include things like making paldium fragments from stone in the crusher, or watering your berry farms. Rush ores can be mounted by crafting the Rush ore saddle unlocked at level six. And a good strategy is to ride a Rush ore into a dungeon because of the concentrated ore vein spawns, ram into those ores and then collect. And make sure to bring some catavers obviously for the extra carry capacity. Rush ores are found slightly to the west of the starting area. Personally, I like having a Lee's punk around the base to do various different tasks. They stay up all through the night. They'll craft for you while you're away. They'll collect resources sources from pals, such as wool from your ranch, but these aren't commonly found near the spawn area, but are instead more often found in raiding groups. Vixie is really cool because they have a passive ability that sometimes digs up random items from the ranch, such as gold and pal spheres, and they can be found slightly west of the spawn. And similarly, Malcat pals can find gold coins for you when at the ranch. You can find these little guys in dungeons with a chance of them spawning as the alpha pal boss as well. Lift monks are absolutely vital, for early game combat, I would say. Their SMG is unlocked at level 11. And what it does is jumps on your head and then proceeds to shoot at the same enemy whenever you hit the trigger. A little tip here is you don't need to use a weapon. You can just start swinging a pickaxe at that enemy and it'll still shoot at the enemies, which is really handy if you don't have the right thing in your hands at the given time. They can be found slightly northwest from the spawn area as well. Nightwings are incredibly valuable and can be ridden as soon as you get level 15. So you're getting a little further in your game here. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, they can be used to find secrets while flying at nighttime, and they also have gathering level two. They'll be found flying right near the spawn area, just slightly to the north. And finally, a Gamos's only task will be planting, so picking some of them up for your early berry farm would be a good idea, and they spawn slightly 
quest. Now, I mentioned earlier that we talk more about XP and also about gold farming. Let's get into that a little bit more now. So before you venture out from your base, make sure to start as many tasks as possible for your pals to work on. Typically, whenever I leave, I'll have them craft anything that's going to take a long time, such as large stacks of baked berries. Now, if your pals get stuck, and they often do, just remove them from your base and redeploy them. I've had a couple of fox sparks nearly starve to death, the dumbasses, just because they got stuck in this river without me noticing and i guess maybe that's my fault and i need a fence but that's by the by now pals regen health and sanity while in your pal box and pals that die go on a 10 minute respawn timer while placed in the pal box for this reason, if you really need a pal for something and it's going to die for some reason, it's a good idea to put it into your inventory and let it heal in your backpack rather than dying and going on cooldown. For our next tip, build chests near production sites to reduce the risk of your transport pals getting stuck. The less travel they have to do, the better. And at level 10, you can unlock the small feed bag with ancient technology. This completely removes the need to feed the player and pals as they now feed automatically. I threw some berries in my bag and I went on with my life. It's that easy. Now, if you have multiple pals in your party with partner skills that have a cooldown, make sure to cycle them early in combat. Here you can see me using three Lift Monks SMGs back to back at the start of combat. And while those are recharging, I'll use my weapon to attack until all of their skills come back up. This essentially is just good resource management, but it's a good thing to keep in the back of your mind. If you go to the survival guide in the game's menus, there's a section that shows you what each element is weak or strong against in case you forget and they're usually pretty simplistic so fires countered by water but does more damage against grass and against ice all those matchups are in the survival guide now pals inflicted by multiple status effects are easier to capture and as far as i'm aware it doesn't matter which status effect is on the pal at a given time it's just the more status effects the better also speaking of that sort of thing Fire pals will act as a torch, so if you're going somewhere dark, you can bring along a fox sparks to light the way for you. Now for this next tip, you're going to need a fire pal or a torch of some kind, and it's a little bit more involved, but it's so worth it because this is going to farm you so much more XP and gold super duper easily. Come over here to the marker that I've placed on my map by the volcano to the west of the spawn area. Inside that area, you'll find an abandoned mine shaft. This is why we needed the torch. And inside there, you'll find a Black Marketeer trader. There are a few things we can do with the trader. First of all, you can just go up to the trader and trade with him. He'll have five rare pals for sale for gold coins. So you can buy any that you want, or if there aren't any that take your fancy, you can return to the title screen and then load it back into your world. And the trader will then have a new lineup of pals for you to buy, so you can cycle through all the different options for what that trader might have by just repeating this process. This will still work also, even if you bought some from the trader the first time round, and then you don't buy some the second time, and then you go back and you buy some the third time like it's just going to keep on resetting every time you go back to the main menu but that's not the main tip okay the really juicy part of this is killing the black marketeer but i've got a way to do it super easily don't you worry so the first thing you need to do is go to the title screen right that home screen and change your world settings to match mine as i've shown on the screen here okay you need to copy these over to your game you can always revert the changes that we make here after you've done this farm so don't worry about about it. It's going to have no impact on your game or your achievements or anything like that. You're just going to change it for the purpose of the farm. Now, this will work at any level, but the lower you are, the more time consuming it's going to be. So I wouldn't do this the second you set foot in the world. It's just not going to work out. I'd recommend bringing a weapon or two and plenty of ammo as you're going to be standing here and shooting for quite a while. And you're probably thinking, Milo, this is never going to work because normally if I shoot the Black Marketeer, he's just going to pull out a massive gun and start shooting back at me. But we are going to avoid that. So before you start attacking, stand to the left of the trader as I'm doing in the gameplay here, do exactly what I'm doing on the screen. And you're going to command your pals to attack aggressively. You're going to throw down your main pal and then very quickly you are going to enter the trading menu with the Black Marketeer. Now the Black Marketeer, he likes to trade. What can I say? It's what he does best, right? So instead of whipping out his massive gun and going to town, he's going to be like, oh yes, I can sell you some pals while you attack me. Of course, it would be my pleasure. Now, sometimes while you're doing this, your pal isn't going to attack. But I found that if you stand on that left side, it makes it more consistent, which is why I told you to go there.
there. And once your pal does start attacking, you can exit the trading menu and you can start attacking yourself. And the marketeer is going to be trapped within that previous kind of loop. Now, since you're underleveled, it's going to take some time to take that black marketeer down. And it's probably also going to take a bit of trial and error. I found changing pals mid fight sometimes causes him to take his gun out. So be very wary of that, for example. And so if your pal stops attacking, it's probably not worth the risk of swapping pals out. And so I would just keep going crazy with your gun instead. You're going to be here for a while regardless. But that while is going to be so worth it because once defeated, he's going to drop you thousands and thousands of gold coins. Like I'm getting 40k gold coins in the gameplay here, tens of thousands of XP and golden keys. My pals leveled up all the way to 28 here of one kill of the Black Marketeer. But it doesn't end there because if you've just earned 40k gold coins from the Marketeer, you can go back to the main menu, come back into your world. He'll be standing there ready to trade again. And you can be like, yes, I would like to buy some pals. Thank you so much, friendly stranger. It's a perfect way to end up with rare pals, XP and gold all from one farm. And once you get sick of doing this a couple of times, you can always capture him if you're a higher level and bring him back to your base and trade with him there in future. And to refresh his inventory in the base, you just need to put him back into the pal box and then take him out again. And that will change his inventory. If you've found any of these tips useful, please drop a like on the video and click through now on the screen to some more of our pal world videos. I'll see you there.